In this video, we're going to cover off catalogs in Build Exact. We're going to start by talking a little bit about an overview of them, what's beneficial and those sorts of things. We're then going to take a look at how to format the Excel import. Once we've taken a look at that, we're then going to go through the process of the data import and create the catalog. And lastly, we're going to talk a bit about how to update existing catalogs once they're in the system. Now, to begin, we're going to navigate over here to the catalog section, and this is where we can see all of our current active and integrated catalogs. As a starting place, I like to mention the benefit of actually building or creating your or importing your own catalogs in, in that essentially what happens is it then allows us to, as once we've imported these catalogs or created these catalogs, to pull those items into uh, places like our estimate costings. So it helps us uh, quote faster because we can pull in the right item, item code and, and current pricing, uh, as well as we can also pull these items in through our purchase orders, as well as our change orders. So it really helps to expedite that estimating process and make sure that we can pull through the full description of the item with the price as it currently sits. Now to begin, we're going to go ahead and hit create new. And starting from the top, working our way down, we're going to see we have two different types of catalog, item catalogs, and we also have assembly catalogs. So if you're looking to import pre-created assemblies into BuildExact, you can certainly do that. Um, as a quick note, both processes are pretty much exactly the same, but if you are going to be looking at the assembly and importing assembly catalogs in, I would certainly direct you to our help section, which is help.buildexact.com. And under the search section here, you can search importing assemblies um, in, and we have some further information on that. In this help section, we also have a great article, the one we're staring at here, on how to actually import the price or item catalogs in from Excel. Uh, this is going to be a great resource. So whether you're watching this video in this FAQ or you want to navigate to it, it's going to be a great resource. It's going to cover off much of what we're going to mention here in the video, both why you'd want to import them in, um, how that catalog needs to then look, as well as we're going to have a price catalog template, which will sort of further outline the template layout, as well as give you a further breakdown of all the different data types that are importable into build exact uh, we have some general tips on formatting uh, and then from here we have a couple different catalogs which you might want to use just to test out this process if you are waiting on one now going back into build exact though we're going to go ahead and make sure the item catalog is selected then from here we're going to give it a name and i'll just say uh, dealer uh, b list we're then going to give it a description. I'll say it's hardware and other items. Uh, as a quick note, people ask me all the time, they say, well, what's kind of the difference here? And really what this is really giving you the ability to is if you have multiple uh, multiple catalogs from multiple dealers, um, suppliers you have that ability to import them in. And these two really just become ways to identify it amongst the list. So you can sort of see out in this grayed out area here, there's the name and there's the description as well. So just again, ways to sort of further help identify which catalog you're looking for. Next up, we're going to assign a contact. Uh, I'm just going to go ahead and give it to my sample supplier. If you don't have them in there, you can go ahead and create the new contact now, but I'm just going to assign it to an existing uh, contact already imported. And at this stage, we reach actually a bit of a fork in the road in that if I didn't have an Excel to import, that's fine. I could actually leave this item ticked off, hit create, and that would then allow me to create a blank catalog, which I could then go through and manually input the items in. I generally find this is very helpful for um, for certain circumstances where maybe you uh, have, say, less than 50 prices that may be provided from a specialty supplier or a subcontractor, or it could be just your pricing, different hourly rates or uh, other costs you want to sort of build into a catalog. So that's absolutely fine. Otherwise, what we're going to be doing here today is, of course, importing the items in from Excel. Now, with that item ticked, I'm going to go ahead and hit the Create and Import button, and we're going to go ahead and confirm that, yep, we're going to be loading into that catalog. So we'll hit the Start Import button, and that'll take us to the first step, which is to actually import the uh, catalog into Build Exact from Excel. Before I go through this process of actually importing it, I want to bring up the catalog in question, which I'm going to import in. And I want to just talk through a couple key formatting things just to make sure that it's in the best format for us to easily import it in. The biggest thing that we need to focus on here is that we need to ensure that each information type is in its own column. So here is an example in column A, you can see the description, and that'll have the description for all the items. And in the next column, we have the unit of measurement, cost, cost item type, which is an optional, but certainly strongly encouraged, as well as things like category, which is again, optional, but strongly encouraged and subcategory and so on and so forth. 
There is additional data types that can be imported, but really these are really the most important ones with maybe also the notable exception as if there is an item code. So that's the first thing. We need to make sure that it is uh, formatted in this way. We also want to ensure that any costs or pricing, uh, the value actually lives there and it's not derived from a formula, which sometimes it can be. Um, and really beyond that, once we have those kind of couple things, we're really in a good position to easily import this into Build Exact. If it doesn't look like that, certainly it'd be uh, best to take a little bit of time and either do a little bit of reformatting, or if you can reach out to your dealer uh, supplier and get a updated uh, catalog in this format, that is also best as well. Anyway, from here to import it into Build Exact, um, I'm going to go ahead and simply click and drag from my bottom screen to my top screen. Um, worth mentioning again that this generally needs to be basically a CSV file. Uh, again, we have a list of it on that um, on the FAQ. So from there, we're going to go ahead and select Sheet Run, hit Continue, and Really at this stage, we're just sort of following through the prompt. So the first section here is just gonna ask us to say, hey, does this top row uh, contain the column headers? And in this case, it does. From there, what we're gonna do is we're then gonna have a preview of the import process. So looking here on the top left-hand side, this will be row or column A. Uh, and this is essentially gonna be the description that sits in that header row that we identified a moment ago. So we can see here the description and we'll see a little sample of the first three rows. And so from there on the right side, when we give this a click, this is a list of information. And what we need to do is map that within Build Exact. So from the way the information type from Excel into what Build Exact identifies that as. Now, as you can see here, it's going to do its best to try to make that identification based off a number of sort of common keywords. Uh, but certainly here, it is always worth double checking and make sure it's landed on the top one, or the right one rather. And again, a tip and trick here is that the most common ones, the mandatory, are sitting at the top of the list. We do, like I mentioned, have additional um, uh, item types, but really the most important ones are at the top of the list here. So just a key thing, if you are navigating further down the list, you're probably looking for one at the top here. Anyway, so once we've gone through and done that, we can also see, yeah, great, 100% of the rows have a value and all the values have passed validation. So basically they're in a format built exact, uh, can accept. So we're going to go ahead and hit continue. Unit of measurements, unit of measurement. Here we can see a couple of the rows failed, but that's not a problem. We can always double check that on the next step. So for now, cost is going to be unit cost. Cost item type is going to be this uh, values here. So we'll confirm that up. Then we'll see category subcategory. And before I hit confirming, if you do have some additional data types, and this does happen from time to time, uh, which aren't relevant, which aren't compatible to be uploaded into Build Exact, that's fine. You can always just tell the system to ignore it as well. So you don't necessarily have to do all that formatting uh, in terms of deleting those columns out before you import them in, because again, you can just tell the system to exclude those at this stage. Anyway, I do want to bring that in. So I'm going to hit confirm mapping. Once that's all done, I'm going to hit review. And basically, if it looks like a spreadsheet, you've done a good job. Of course, we do have some rows with some problems. So we're going to let Build Exact identify that. And here we can see that, ah, yeah, there's a formula in there that this row must exist as a decimal number. So I can manually change that if I need. Once I've done that, I'm going to hit continue. And I'm going to confirm that I am ready to submit. And that's now going to import into Build Exact. Now, this one will go quite quickly because it's quite small, but depending on the size of the catalog, this can take a few moments up to a couple minutes. And you will see here that this went from zero to 100 uh, pretty much instantaneously, but definitely worth noting that as that upload progresses, you will see that progress bar. And if it goes over a certain amount of time, you will also see an additional uh, status update wheel here on the catalog section. So really just important to note that certainly for especially those bigger uh, item catalogs, this can take a little bit and we'll give you a couple different visual indicators to let you know that progress is happening and give you some sense of when that should be done. But of course, just like that, now we have the catalog imported uh, and it's all ready to go. So of course, now we can go in, we can take a look at it, but more importantly, we can now start to use this in one of those areas we talked about earlier, including the estimate costings. So that's essentially the process of how to import it in. Now, the last thing I want to touch on in this video is looking at, well, how do we actually then maintain the imported catalogs? And in that, there's two different ways to do that. So let's just say that we're a couple months down the road and the price has changed. What we can do is we can either hit this little blue icon, 
where we can increase the items all by a certain percent. So generally I find this isn't super applicable necessarily for uh, item catalogs, uh, but this could be for something like if you have a labor rates or something like that from subcontractors yourself built into a catalog and all of those just gonna go up by X percent. And this is a really handy way. Otherwise, um, in probably more common circumstances, uh, your supplier dealer will then email you with the updated catalog, basically the updated version of that spreadsheet. And what we'll do is instead of creating a new catalog, what we want to do is in that circumstance where we already have one imported in, that one imported in, is we're essentially just going to import the new one over top of the old one. And we do that by simply hitting this little up arrow here. And this will then largely repeat the process the second and subsequent importations will actually go faster because Build Exact should identify the original mapping and pre-map it. Uh, but effectively, the process is exactly the same. And once you've completed and finished importing the new one, what will happen is Build Exact will look at the item code and where there's no item code, it'll look at the description of the item. And where either of those values match, it'll then essentially update the price automatically. So whatever the prices may have changed to, it'll automatically readjust the price. And if it finds an item that it doesn't have an existing item code or item description for, then it's going to go ahead and add in that new item. So if your supplier is bringing uh, new items onto their range, that should automatically be reflected in the new import process. Mm -hmm.